You're listening to the Electronic Media Collective Podcast Network. Yeah, it's a mouthful. For more great shows like the one you're about to enjoy, visit electronicmediacollective.com. And now, our feature presentation. You know what? I was never a James Wan fan. You know, every time he came out with other movies, you know, it's like, oh, it's the guy from Saw. Saw's an okay movie, but it's, you know, it's one and done. It's one and done for me. Um, this movie's converted me. I'm a James Wan fan. I'm going to see everything that he's made that I, uh, that I, uh, have missed over the years. Eric, how the hell are you doing? We're talking I about Malignant. I was really hoping that you were going to say something like this. Buddy, I'm watching this movie and was watching it with some friends who have already seen it. And this is a great part of, of, of just really a movie, a part of the experience altogether is when the friends who have seen the movie before have this new level of enjoyment because they are wanting to see how how I react, how me and Sarah react to watching this movie because right. of what this movie is. And there has to be a part. Thank you, James Wan, by the way, for just picking certain projects or writing certain projects. But there has to be a, pro- uh, a part for most movies where at some point, as a director, producer, actor, editor, you think to yourself, is this a good movie? Is this going to work? And if you do it right, anything will work, right? James Wan definitely comes together with this, not with just a ridiculous story, but with some fantastic uh, camera work, too, that just seemed to really stand on its own. I'm happy to talk about this one. I'm happy that we bumped this one up faster, by the way, to yeah. talk about it, too. Malignant yeah, I, on HBO yeah. Max in theaters, um, written, directed by James Wan. Oh, and his uh, it's a three piece, right? It was written, directed, written by James Wan, Ingrid uh, Bisu, and uh, Akella Cooper. Mm-hmm. Hope I'm pronouncing those names right. James Wan and his wife wrote this. Oh. You see, for me, James Wan is is the modern day Ridley Scott. And I, I, I thought about that a lot last night. And the reason why I say that is if you look at Ridley Scott's Oeuvre. He really hasn't made awesome films every single time. You know what I mean? Like, there's only a few that comes to mind. You got Alien, Blade Runner, maybe Thelma Louise, and Gladiator. You know that? That's pretty much about it. That are like really, really good films. Sure. And but the one thing that uh, that Ridley Scott is all just always amazing at is camera work and sci-fi. You know what I mean? Like, look at Alien and Blade Runner. That's a one-two punch right there. So I kind of look at James Wan here, and I'm like, okay, so his alien is Saw. Comes out of nowhere. It's very stylized. He moves the camera around a lot. He gives birth to a whole generation of torture porn, essentially, with that movie. Oh, and yeah. Then he, you know, and, and, and then he comes out with Dead Silence. I've never seen that movie at the time. I saw it probably a few years ago for the first time. and eh, it was okay. Um, and he goes The Conjuring. So he does those same things. He's never had a Blade Runner. You know what I mean? And this movie is not Blade Runner. I'm not trying to compare it, but this is his Blade Runner, meaning that this is very heavy stylized. Story's not all that great. Actually, I don't think the acting's all that great. I think what makes this movie fun for me is it's something different. I've definitely seen this movie before, this type of movie. Um, but it has, a, but it clearly has a three structure act. It has a mystery, it has action, and it has horror at the end. And uh, I thought overall, before we get into every little thing. Uh, that that was done very well for what he could do. Does that make sense, my analogy for you? Oh, ab- absolutely. Uh, I, I, I follow along with that, too. Uh, just just a good way to, to, to say it, too, because obviously James Wan has done some projects that are maybe not his style. Uh, maybe Aquaman comes to mind. Furious 7 mm-hmm. uh, maybe comes to mind as well, too. He's doing another Aquaman. He's doing He did Archive 81, which is a TV series. Uh so, yeah, a lot of these are not to his strengths, but that's great because the reason why Ridley Scott and uh, why people of his like are in such great company is because of how diverse that they can be, how well they can kind of do everything else. Right. Uh, Aquaman, it was an okay movie for James Wan to do. Again, it just wasn't his strength. It wasn't a James Wan movie. It was just done well by James Wan. Right. If I'm going to say that. But what makes him unique in these scary movies? Is it his story? Is it the subject? Because Saw on its own was unique because it gave us a character in pop culture. 
that has uh, now ascended to the ranks of legendary status, right? He Jigsaw is in the Hall of Fame. Okay, no, I'm going to disagree with you on that, and this is not a Jigsaw episode, but I will finally, after all these years, get something off my chest, okay? Because we're probably never going to review Saw. I feel that it's not a good movie at all. I actually think it's probably a no-bag. And the reason why I say that is the only reason why that we have this hype, and you know what I'm going to say, it's the ending. Eric, in 2004, I'm a senior in high school. I go see this movie that everybody's talking about called Saul. And then when he rises up at the end, the whole theater erupts. Yeah. I mean, people are standing and going, whoa. That's the only reason why that movie was successful was just because of that ending that nobody saw coming. Go back and actually watch that movie. I would say that the new one that we reviewed earlier this year was better. So, ooh, wow, that's – you mean Spiral? Oh, I'm, I'm telling you because because the – Hold on, hold on, be, uh, be, to, to not to cut you off here, but like to prevent completely on a tangent. I guess I can understand that that uh, this instead is more like an M Night Shyamalan thing that that Saw might have been his sixth sense. Is that what you're trying to say? Maybe I just what okay, I'm uh, okay. trying to say that he has definitely grown as a director because one of the things that I really loved about this movie is when she's running around the house and he decides to do that bird's eye view shot. And clearly digital, but I, I, I really like those ideas. And he did some of those ideas and saw. He's a very good visual director, like Ridley Scott. And he can't tell a really, really good story, like Ridley Scott. But the guy has an atmosphere and a mood, like Scott. So that's why I'm seeing what he's doing here. I'm seeing his progression from Saw. The guy has definitely grown. And I'm really excited to tear this movie apart and talk to you about it. Because um, I think that he needs to stop doing big studio pictures and he needs to follow um, with follow up with this, not necessarily a sequel, but continue down this road sure. because this is where he's good at. Uh, sure. Sure. This is, I agree with you that because a lot of it is his camera work. Yeah. Uh, most work of, most of uh, the movies that he would be better known for is because of camera work insidious has the camera work, especially in the opening sequence, uh, The Conjuring, known for the the, the f- traveling camera and the creepy background stuff. That's the other thing, too, is that a, a scary movie a, works because of the direction in the camera, because it's directed focus. You are looking at what the director wants you to look at. You are focusing at where the director wants you to, to be focusing on, you know, and whether it be like a corner of a room or whether it be an individual in a big open area, you know, like it's their job to to kind of walk you through this haunted house that they're, that they're making. And he does a very good job with that. Yes, the camera work in this is considerably better than I would say his previous stuff. It's almost like he's gaining more and more every single time. That bird's eye view was awesome. It was completely genius how he came up with that idea. It gave us a sense of mood and atmosphere. It was it was it was, it was absolutely great. That idea. Genius to come up with that idea. I, I'll tell you one even better that was uh, uh, said by one of the friends watching the movie is that it does something that a lot, not a lot of horror movies do, in that it gives you an actual, like from from a relative point of view, a layout of the house. Yeah, you know, to to see how it works, see what the fluid motion of it works. You know, it, oftentimes it's easy to watch one of these scary movies to plan your escape, to to live very easily uh, in in your your twenty twenty hindsighted view of as a as a viewer and be like, oh, I can just go out this, I can go down those stairs, go out this door or out that window. But now we have this house and we actually get to see. How easy it is, you know, for somebody to maybe go up the stairs rather than right. out the door instead. I, right. Yeah, what? How, how uh, wonderful was a lot of, and not just to praise that one too, because there was a few other ones that they did a very good job on as well. But, right. um, but yeah, I, I like that his signature in these films is the camera work. Yes, he knows how to move the camera, which is great, and. Um... I'm continuing to see. I'm 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 interested to see what he's going to do next. James Wan, Hollywood studio, not interested in. James Wan, small budget horror. This is not small budget, but you get what I'm saying. Yeah. Um. Then okay, 
he may have something to say. I have something to say about this movie, though. I was not surprised about the ending. No, for people that are listening, I'm not going to spoil the ending right now in this beginning of the episode here, uh, for those of you who haven't seen it, but I call it. And that's not a, a whip it out, Eric, and saying, I know everything, but I've seen this before. I mean, this was very familiar. Uh, hell, one of the things that comes to mind was uh, there was a Simpsons Treehouse of Horror episode that yep. was pretty much this thing. Yep. Um, this kind of remind me of also uh, Quatu and Total Recall. Um, so it's like, okay, you, I just, I have seen this before, and the reason why, and this is one of my gripes of the movie, the movie tells you exactly who the killer is and what's going on from the opening shot. They never should have shown it. So what I mean is, in the beginning of the movie, we're in this hospital, doctors are being flung out of the room. There's this, uh, there's this, uh, there's this woman doctor that's, that's like, kind of like, she's like in charge, Dr. Weaver, I believe her name is. Mm -hmm. And she's just like, Gabriel, you've been a very, very bad boy. And then the camera turns and there's this octopus tentacle looking thing right behind this kind of curtain. <laughs> some, some obviously weird uh, figure, you know, uh, a mask by like this opaque kind of screen. Right. You can't it really is. see it, but you could kind of see that it's it's not human. Yeah. Maybe it is. And she's like, Gabriel, you've been a very bad boy. And then she says the line that destroys the movie. It's time to cut out the cancer. So I already know that we're dealing with some sort of twin here. You know yeah, what I mean? I, I kind of got that vibe too. And I think he, for the most part, I guessed a lot of this movie – before the halfway mark. Yeah. And th you know what? That's that's not a bad thing because I'm thinking in my head the entire time as I'm watching this movie and it's the dots are connecting quite simply, mm -hmm. if I could say it too. It, it, it wasn't like, you know, a hard dig or anything. But, you know, you connect the dots. But then there's a part of me that as I'm connecting, I'm just like, no, really? They're going like, to go there? Yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. It's like, you're doing this? It, it feels like you just like they went all in, you know. Like here's right. like here's all these these really weird and silly kind of ideas. Not bad. I'm not saying bad, but just really weird and just like, ridiculous. And instead of like trying to tweak it to something, they just say no, no, no. Let's go Sam Raimi with it. Let's go yeah. all in and like just accept it and, and try to play it off as the most serious thing ever. And mm -hmm. it's just like this is so crazy. That I'm, 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 I'm with it now. I'm buckled in to the to the ride here, and I'm along with it here. Um, after that, after you kind of figure out the story, now you can just sit along for the ride. Now you can just watch right. the movie. Right. I mean, like it, it is, it is quite amazing. Out of all the movies that we reviewed in the history of Movie Guys podcast, especially this year, with some of the no bags we've given us, how this ridiculous. Let's be honest, Eric. This is a ridiculous concept yes and the design of gabriel is ridiculous and it's like it it's, it's just ridiculous and for us to sit here and actually have a conversation with it and not us giggling and crying with <laughs> laughter about how ridiculous this is it's just it's shocking that that tells me right there that a director a good director can make anything out of nothing i will give you uh one thing recently would be uh, james cameron I would say that he he got a performance out of Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger's not a good actor. He's a terrible actor. But Cameron, who's a good director, you know, got a chance to use Arnold's strengths, no pun intended. That's kind of what James Wan is. You put this movie into the hands of some incompetent director that's an unnamed guy, this movie's this movie's a joke. Well, uh, in the production, uh, James Wan had said that this is something similar to or maybe not he had said this but uh bloody disgusting oh yeah no it, it's james one it, it'd be more like oh yeah so he did say that a uh ga, a gallio film italian term i'm probably saying that correct incorrectly okay um uh galley uh galio whatever okay. uh it, which was a, a italian kind of uh, a word for their term of uh depicting mystery fiction and thrillers uh often kind of uh, in a yellow hue it's kind of done in in the same fashion where it's just uh, you know dramatic scenes kind of weird 
music, which there was a lot of weird music in this one. Yeah, some choices, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I guess it's just kind of uh, done like a crime whodunit type of genre. In just the, like Saw. So. Yeah. Formula. Kind of like in, in a more of a campier sense in the uh, Italian cinematic world, though. Psychological sexploitation horrors that uh, often are slasher and crime fiction dramas. So, okay, so we get cut off the cancer scene, and then boom, we get forward from 93 to modern day, and we get this uh, woman, uh, Madison, and uh, she's had a hard day at work. She goes upstairs. She, she's, she's pregnant, and then her husband's just sitting there and watching And in scrubs, TV. too. So she, and she's, in scrubs. She's, she's a, nurse a nurse or something. And immediately hated her husband character, not because of what he does. I mean, that is, that is horrible what he's about to do. But I hate it because there was no depth to it, and I guess maybe the story didn't need him to continue. But uh, he's just sitting there just watching TV, and clearly he doesn't want this baby. He's arguing with her, and then he slams her head against the uh, wall, and then she's bleeding, and oh my god, you're a dick. So women, little little PSA for you. If you are in a fight with your man, and he slams your head against the wall— you don't tell him to go sleep on the couch. Get out of the house. That Holy makes shit. no sense. Well, I would say, among uh, many things that you could you could say because so many pieces of advice. I would say the the one if say if you were still bleeding in the head like that, go to the damn hospital. Well, holy, you know what? No, she's holy a nurse. Cow. She may she mean me. You know, you don't know. Well, there's the yeah. other part of it, too. Abusive relationship and the denial of, of kind of what is actually happening, the shock that is going through. I'm not going to pretend, obviously, to know what that is is like or even know what the hell that world is, is about. Um, but I'll, I'll accept it just because it's trauma, you know? Yes. Okay. It, it was, and it was a very um, strong scene, too. Like, no, very – yeah, no. Was... you just like, holy shit, that's pretty brutal, you know? Out of nowhere, um, but, but to be honest with you, though, I, I, I did not care for it just because he was a one-note character. We didn't get a chance to know him more. I, but, I, uh, I'm, I'm assuming the script just didn't want us to know us more because clearly he is the first kill. I mean, he – well, yes, he is the first kill. I mean, he – that's why he's here for a body count. That's what we're here to see. So he's sleeping on the couch, and then all of a sudden, this ghostly figure shows up, sitting on the couch, turns off the lights. Really great. I mean, typical James Wan. Don't yep. need to spell out every little detail, but typical James Wan. And then we get this ghostly dark figure with long black hair showing up behind him and smashes his head against the wall, just like he did to the wife, and breaks his fucking neck. I mean, okay. nearly decap. I mean, nearly headless Nick style decapitates him. Right. Very cool idea. So the movie goes, I don't want to talk about every little scene because I don't want to make this an hour and a half long episode because there's a lot we could talk about. But let's hit, you know, some of the some of the cliff notes, if you will. But while her husband's dead, we get the, the police detectives coming to investigate. We got Regina and God, what was the other guy's name? He was the main Shaw. dude. Shaw. Shaw was the main guy's name? Well, that was his last name. Uh, OK, just Shaw. Like because, that, but whatever. Uh, Officer Good and Ready. <laughs> we get two detectives. Uh, we find out, you know, that she has a sister and uh, she lost the baby. I think this is her third miscarriage, I believe is what they yeah, say. Yeah, that sounds right. And I love the shot of the uh, of the of uh, of the detective uh, Regina when uh, she was like, well, I just found out that the neighbors said that she was an abusive relationship motive. I'm just like, OK, well, then take her in for questioning. And they don't do it until almost the end of the movie when there's other murders happening. Oh, my God. I mean, dude, these police are stupid. Yeah. When there's really no other evidence to suggest anything else, then why would it? And especially for the wife to, to be hysterical and be like, well, you know, it was somebody there. But like she goes back and there is the marking on the wall. Right. Right. So hearing that as a detective, that would be more, mm -hmm. you know, like that. that's just more of a, of a case to build off of that. So, yeah, I, I agree with you in, in that kind of silly part of it, too. No, they're just stupid. I will explain to you how they're stupid later on. But like, so then so then we get the next oh, kill. Uh, many times okay. because of, no, no, I'm just, you're, I agree with you completely on, the, on that because Shaw, the dumb character, does a lot of stupid things as, as well, too. But 
is all these stupid things that, that in, I'm sure you're going to go off into plenty. Are these a part of of the genre of this Italian type of, of film that we're getting here? Is it where, like where it's just supposed to be just kind of, you know, like this, this almost this, this little Saturday night special on TV, you know, it's like, it's almost supposed to be like this little, you know, uh, this, this little, little book, a little bathroom reader kind of book. It's just, it's supposed to be quick. It's supposed to be dumb. It's supposed to be just progressing like this. It, it, does yeah. it matter to, to, to make it like this, especially with something, so crazy. Yes, because because you and I are sitting here actually psychoanalyzing this movie, and we shouldn't. Sure. I, I mean, yeah. I mean, like, I'm expecting smart police procedurals with this, because that's what James Wan has done before with, with Saw as an example. He's done it in the majority of all of his horror films. Police are involved in some way and somehow. And for, and for Regina to literally say to the other detective, Shaw... Uh, motive, and they don't arrest her. It's just like, okay, that's stupid. You go, you, go ahead, honey. Go back and go back to the go back to the murder house. You'll be fine. You don't have trauma. Go back to the house that your husband was murdered in. Maybe by you, but go ahead. You know. And then she has her sister with her, and um, then the next kill is. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But um, before the first, uh, bef- uh, before the second kill, doesn't she get kidnapped by Gabriel and she gets hung up in the attic, right? That is uh, the tour guide for the Seattle Underground tour. Oh, that was the tour guide. Yes, who we find out is actually someone later. But yeah, the person who, that Gabriel, uh, the, the bad guy, uh, kidnaps and ties up in his dungeon uh, or lair, excuse me, is or was the tour guide from the Seattle Underground tour. So I'm not going to I'm not going to completely lie to you. I feel like a complete idiot now, Eric, because the two characters look exactly the same. Madison and the tour guide. I thought after every kill, <laughs> I thought every kill he kidnapped her and hung her up there. Oh, jeez. Two and two together. No, well, they, they look the exactly for, the same for, for a reason. Well, I didn't know that at the time, but I, I mean, maybe maybe it's because I was watching my wife majority of this movie because, you know, a horror movie's good. When my wife puts her phone down, yeah. Oh, that's that's always a that's a good sign. Yeah, I, my wife hates horror films. I literally thought. I'm really sorry. Let me explain this again. I thought until you just explained this to me, and I feel like a jerk. That every time there was a kill, he would kidnap her, and 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 Madison, and he would hang her up. Oh my and, god! Well, now you got to go back and rewatch this thing. I have to because at the end, when the other person is revealed, I'm like, well, where did that person come from? <laughs> Yeah, wow, wow buddy. Wow, wow this must have been a roller coaster of a movie for you. Yeah, it was. I'm like, okay. All right, so now that makes even more sense because yeah. they look very similar. Tell me they don't. Oh, no, they, obviously they, they do. I, I can understand that. It took me a, a, a few squints to kind of realize that it was somebody else. But then it dawned on me that this person was special because Gabriel doesn't – is not merciful. He has an agenda, and it's quite – uh, quickly shown in the beginning of this movie that he has a kill list and mm-hmm. there's motive between uh, everything that he is doing. And yeah. so for him to take a, a hostage means that that person is special. It wasn't just to be a random thing. At least that's what I had thought. So right. who uh, the reveal later of who she is, it was not a surprise to me. It was another guess that I had had probably, you know, quickly. In. But, again, but again, these the, the guessing of the story didn't ruin any bit of this movie. No, it didn't. I mean, that was the fun of it. It's like, you know, like James Wan's not hoping that we sit here and figure out who done it kind of like a scream. I think he knows by now that modern audiences are, are with him. I think the fun is the action sequence and the camera oh, shots yeah. and the techniques. That's the fun of it. We get the second kill of Madison doing laundry and she sees the kill of Dr. Weaver, which I feel Dr. Weaver should have been second to last since she was like, you know, like the main doctor spearheading this whole thing. You know, she was usually usually in these kind of movies, the evil doctor, if you will, is always the second or the last kill. Right. Well, so because it's more, more of her. a big, yeah, more of a bigger threat or bigger pull. But yeah, uh, Dr. Weaver's first kill and we get to Brutal see it. Kill. Yeah. In her and, kitchen, yeah. right? Like she gets stabbed in the kitchen, and then and then Gabriel gets his weapon, her trophy. 
then he turns into a, a sword knife thing. Yeah. Um, can I just say, by the way, too, this is after this sequence, um, is when the when the police go to investigate this murder. This is when we get uh, James Wan's wife, um, Ingrid, coming in and uh, introduced to to her. And I really enjoy when they put humor in. Which with one's these... her? She was the forensics. Oh, oh, really? She was the mousy one that kind of had the hots for Shaw? Yes, exactly. I loved her. That's his wife? Yeah, and she's also oh, she's so much fun. A, a co-writer of the movie, too. Oh, she's so mousy. I love her. Yeah, okay. I think it was a great character. And I just, I really enjoyed the way that um, they were... Oh, 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 Regina, the detective, was just like, oh, well, you know, that trophy's got another part of it. You need to go uh, search for the other half. And she goes, oh, aren't we all? You know? <laughs> yeah. That, and just, just in a love longing, you know, kind of. So it, it was cute. It, it was it really helped charm me into this movie a bit more. Oh, yeah. She was absolutely a delight. Actually, towards the end of the movie, my wife really loved her a lot because I think my wife saw a lot of herself into that character. My wife was like, oh, God, I hope not. And I was like, hey, the credits haven't rolled yet. Nobody, no death. Nobody, no death. Just relax. So then we get the third kill of another doctor in this beautiful hotel and done very well. So so my wife and I are watching this, right? And the third kill is this doctor is in his, his bedroom. It's raining outside. And I'm doing scene by scene on this for a reason, everybody. And he turns his back and then the windows open, the rain's coming in he closes the window and you see wet footprints or whatever into the closet. And I was like, well, clearly he's in the closet, right? And then he slowly walks into the closet. I'm like, oh, he's gonna get pulled into the closet. Nope. And it's like, he turns in the closet light. He gets all the, like every single horror trope where the killer is going to be, the killer's not there. And then Gina's like, where is he? <laughs> She's like flipping out. And then uh, I said, just watch. He's just going to pop up randomly somewhere. And he randomly pops up, and he takes his time. I don't know why Gabriel takes his time, but he does. We get a great sequence with Madison waking up on the bed because she's sharing these experiences with the killing, you know, with the right. killer, with, with Gabriel. So whenever Gabriel kills, she can see it happening. Um. Right. You know, which, which is pretty cool. But we get a great sequence of her laying in this bed. And kind of doing the um, the poster shot of Gabriel, what you know, kind of kind of going over her creepily to to go to his kill, and yeah, just playing with his food. Her. Essentially, that's what he was doing. He was playing with his food. And this is where we get probably the first <laughs> telling glimpse is the shot of Gabriel stabbing uh, Doctor Victor Fields uh, in in his bed. How he is stabbing Dr. Victor. In the face. Yeah, yeah, I mean... In the in the Really messing him up. face. With a golden sword, now that was a trophy, um, sharpened to, to just be some sort of horrible weapon. But, um... This, it, it's done... Uh, so, so weird, like, it, it's done... You know, the, the movements look... Very strange, and then this is probably the first piece of evidence that was just like, ah, okay. So to move like that usually looks like it looks like the person's backwards, you know. It looks almost it looked like a dummy at first, like like an animatronic kind of dummy. And then you take a second look at it, and it's like, no, I, I think this person is 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 moving backwards. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, like I. It's, it's clear as day when we get the chase scene after this. Um, but it was it was like, huh, that's an interesting take on it. What and then an we get, amazing scene. Oh, I loved it. And then we get, and then we get uh, the uh, fourth kill, which uh, the detectives are trying to figure out. You know, they go to Dr. Weaver's house. They find out she's a doctor. They find out that she studies children, whatever, whatever, whatever. You know, standard you know, tropes. And then he discovers, oh, my God, the killer is killing these doctors. So we got one more doctor. And he was taking a bath, and that's when Gabriel comes and kills that doctor, and the detective was just just was just was a second late. And there's Madison standing. He can't see her because she can see the kill. And then we get the big chase of Gabriel just moving very ghostly and uh, kind of like a cheetah in a way. This guy is climbing down rafters and everything. Bullshit, by the way, I will say, because they're in Seattle, right? Uh, yeah, and which okay. is where I watched this movie. 
You were in Seattle Lights. With Seattle Lights, and they it was great watching it with them because obviously you have some, some locals to the scene. Uh, one thing also I noticed, a lot of flyby shots, a lot of drone shots, a lot of fluffer shots mm-hmm. in this in this movie. James Wan seems to really be loving Seattle there. I don't know if they paid you an extra for that. But yeah, I see what you're getting at. There's not a whole lot of fire escapes uh, in the city. Yeah. I don't think that there are any, in fact, uh, is is what they were saying. They just say, I don't, a lot of them, uh, my friends, they were just like, I don't think I ever, ever remember seeing a fire escape. But it's, but it's, but it's there to show us a mood of, okay, this thing is superhuman, which I call bullshit on. But then again, should I call bullshit on when we get to the reveal? But one thing I don't understand was a set and it really bothered me. So we're having this chase and it's just, like I said, the movements of Gabriel is just, it's, it's unsettling. It kind, of, it kind of reminds me of stop motion in a way, which stop motion freaks me the hell out. Um, and they get into this underground, like, horse carriage storage room with yes, fog that on is, the ground. That's the Seattle underground. So that is a true uh, thing of the city. There was the old part of Seattle. Um, and just because of... I, I think like local hazard or uh, I'm sorry, like topographical uh, hazards, flooding and w- whatever they just built. I'm sure there's more to it, and somebody can correct me. They just built the new city on top of the old one, and so the city currently Seattle that you see is just the new city that's built on top of an old one. It's not like you know miles or anything like you know new 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 York for Futurama or something like that. Yeah. But you know what I mean. It, there's there's room down there, and there's like tunnels and buildings and garages. And there's there's a bunch of stuff down there. Horse carriages with fog on the ground for no reason. There's a whole there's a whole city down there. So and you can go down there and take tours. Okay. It's, it's well, actual, I mean, it's an actual thing for anyone who's uh, wanting to visit Seattle. Well, I didn't much care for the set. It actually it, it kind of took me out of it because I, I just it it, it 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 took me out of it. That's all I gotta say. It just took me out of it. So, okay, so now we're figuring out the reveal. We're figuring out that Madison was actually Emily. And we find out that she was adopted. Her mother was 15 years old and was raped. By who? I don't think we still know at the end of this movie. Was was that what it was? I, I thought. Yes, um... 100% that's what they said. Cause, because Madison's sister, very. I don't know how the hell she escaped with her life. But Madison's sister is like, I'm going to go to the old hospital on a cliff because that's what they did back in the day was build hospitals on cliffs. And I'm going to walk in this scary, haunted uh, hospital, grab all the files and the tapes, and bring it back. Like, clearly, she would not have survived. That, that was crazy. That sister, let me tell you. James Wan, I think it said that this is not a superhero movie. Bullshit after seeing She's this. She's a superhero movie. She's after, it. She is. Yeah, she has a super uh, ability. To pull up any reference to the plot on a whim, like yeah, yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. It's it's like she read the script. <laughs> she has a copy of it, just in her back pocket and her purse at all times. Yeah, she, I mean, she like, didn't pull go... up Mel Brooks and just be like, wait a minute, this isn't it supposed to happen. It's not in the script. <laughs> but she gets all these tapes, and the first thing we see—well, not the first thing, but told in order because they break it up—is Madison is Emily. Her mother was raped, and she was 15 years old. We never knew who the father was. But when she gave birth, there was this growth or a tumor on the baby's back, and she decided to give up her baby to these doctors so they could study her. These doctors were not made to be malicious or evil. They were made to help this this baby, which turned out to be Emily. This baby, well, then this baby grows into Emily and we find out in a stomach turning scene who exactly Gabriel is. He is a tumor on the back of her head and on half her back. Dude, that turns your stomach, man. When the camera turns and Emily's like sitting there and like the back of her head is is, is the face of Gabriel, but it's not really a face. It kind of looks like Nemesis from Resident Evil 3. Yeah. And then he has these like he has like these weird like like tentacle looking arms. You can see like the ribs and stuff of him all over her back. I'm like, yeah. what the fuck, dude? What a great Tom Savini design. Not yeah. literally Tom Savini, but like creepy and gross as fuck, dude. I actually paused the movie just to study the puppetry of that. That thing was a puppet. I but that do I do I laugh or am I shocked? 
I think you're shocked. I mean, like it's it's you laugh because it's ridiculous, but then it's so gross you can't look away. Oh yeah, absolutely. It was, uh, and the way that it, it evolved to the <laughs> the story about it to where Doctor Weaver had said that she was going to remove the cancer, and then the after however many trials that we get uh, of them trying to work with Gabriel, it finds out that he's actually, you know, or what she calls him, the devil, that he's just, uh, well, a malignant kind of tumor there that's always going to be this, this, uh, what, twin that's just overpowering and evil, I yeah. guess? Bart Simpson evil twin from Jurassic Wars. Yeah. Exactly. So they were going to remove it, but they couldn't remove the brain part. So instead that they surprised it by pushing the the Gabriel brain back or recessed it back into hers and yes. then just and then just closed it up right. uh, basically which makes sense because when the husband uh, bashes her head into the wall the back of the head, it breaks her skull open thus releasing Gabriel, Gabriel. and this so, is where we where we get <laughs> no, no, okay now I would not be Jordan if I cannot speak on this before we get to the big ending of it, there's a lot of there's a lot of BS moments when it comes to this cut out the tumor nonsense. Uh, I mean, this is where it's like, okay, so they so they share the same brain, so they push the brain back in, and now she's going to live a normal life. But then she gets adopted by this woman who is also pregnant with going to be Madison's sister. Madison is Emily. Emily's Madison. Go with us, folks. And they have, of course, they have like 1993 home video footage of her talking to her imaginary friend when she's too old to be talking to her imaginary friend. And then we have glimpses of her only speaking to Gabriel through a phone. Something we didn't say in the review so far is that Gabriel can only speak via um, electricity waves, electric waves. Yeah, that seems to be a, a kind of a um, unexplained thing is that Gabriel is uh, able to, I guess, communicate electromagnetically? Yeah, well, we're, we're, that's what we're going to do. So so then finally the cops are like, hey, you know what? We've kind of been sitting on Madison here for a while. We might as well take her in for questioning. They take her in. Cops who are listening to this episode, if you bring in a long, dark-haired woman that says she's not the killer and she's kind of tweaking out and then the phone rings and it says unknown and she says he wants to talk to you and all of a sudden this crazy ghost of the figure talks to you, uh, heads up, cops, she ain't the killer. But no, 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 that doesn't matter because they throw her in a holding cell with other women? It was right around that time is when I started to notice as well how her wardrobe was, is that she was always dressing in dark clothing in black, much mm -hmm. like Gabriel was. Mm -hmm. That her hair was always is very very long and dark, much like Gabriel. That she has the same body type, and also how up until this point we never got to see really the back of her. Right. It was always a, a front shot, um, a reaction shot, but never really the back of her head. And it always looked like her hair was kind of done up and like you know, you know, a buffed up in the back a bit more. So that's again more more suspicion though. It's just kind of like you know what I. I bet you, if you take away some of that hair from the back, you're, you're gonna get a face. Well, the, well the, that okay, you know what? I, I, we're we're here, we're at it, man. We're we're at the scene. We're at the scene, but before we get into this, real quick, I'm gonna call BS on this one too because I think this way. She has a husband. She's had three miscarriages. What do husbands and wives do to create children? You're gonna sit here and tell me that he didn't see on her back this giant freaking scar or? Like the back of her head, like just this. I, I don't know. Uh, the, I just, Gabriel only came out after her head got bashed in, so well, I, I that was that. a new development, right? But Gabriel, Gabriel's body was on her back as well when we did that turnaround scene, meaning that she's had to have scarring back there. Yeah, she, yeah, she probably has a, a scar. In I don't know. She also was traumatized into that first eight years of her life, or she didn't remember much of that too, right? So I guess okay. I okay. guess as a husband, you know, being abusive husband he probably had the history as well too i'm guessing so it's just okay. like when they met yeah she's probably like, oh i i was adopted and i have a you know history of this and that whatever but whatever she's also um very attractive so i'm sure many guys looking to be like oh yeah well whatever as long as hey, whatever okay as long as you're with me pretty girl like you all right okay all right so, so this, apparently she's so, also dating chris pine in real life is she really dating I, um, or married 
Uh, she, uh, apparently, she's she's been hopping around from a, a lot of guys, but she's also in Peaky Blinders. She's also blonde real life. Oh, good for her. Um, okay, so now we get the alien bursting out of the chest scene where she's in this holding cell. And, of course, of course, we get the butch woman that has to be the tough one. And then we get the whore that's peeing in the background for no reason. And 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 then they all just gang up on her and just beat her up, just you know, just because. And okay, now we got her big reveal, and she's screaming, and everybody's now they're freaking out, right? And then falls to her knees. Gabriel, she pulls her back of her head open, and Gabriel comes right out, and then the body contorts, and it is a massacre, a straight up massacre. Um, so yeah, um. Bloody, violent, good. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, this movie suddenly gets turned into an action scene. And what an action scene. Yeah, what an action. Just great. Just, I mean, like, this goes from a drama, mystery, to a horror, to an action film right off the bat. It, it's absolutely amazing. And then, of course, I, I, I couldn't help to think of uh, Terminator, uh, where uh, Schwarzenegger kills every cop in the precinct, because that's exactly what happens here. And then we get James Wan, who was the... Uh, James Wan's wife, you said, who's the forensic lady who yeah. doesn't die. Oh, thank God. Gabriel gets their stuff. We get a big, huge shootout with Gabriel and the other cops and just, oh, my God. Some of these cops get it horrible. There was this one, uh, there was this one cop uh, where Gabriel takes, like, that golden knife sword and goes right up through her chin and it comes up yeah. the top of her head. And it's just like, whoa. Like, one, uh, one cop loses his arm. Really fun, good action. Uh, I think Gabriel punched through one of the yeah, yeah, detainees. He did. he did. He did. This is, and, and, and folks, what I mean personally by this is good, there is better action moments because there's some bad CG in this towards the end. This is like Mortal Kombat good. Just just, just understand what I mean when I say good. Like this is this is what I'm expecting. You know what I mean? This is this is a roller coaster at this point. This is fun. Some, some good old-fashioned fist pumping blood and guts you know just just action sequence the the type of shit that you would you know play as a kid you just you know a, a nice little fun sequence and it did not disappoint it was no. and we and again we got one in the jail cell and then in the 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 police precinct too it was yeah dude it, it was it was fun and on top of that to have gabriel move like he does which is all kind of weird and have this this face behind his head too just kind of doing flips it, it's so it's 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 cool to watch but again just so strange and ridiculous you're having fun yes it's, it's ridiculous it's fun um i was completely bought like this at this point but then gabriel goes to the hospital because jordan didn't know this but the woman that was hanging up in the attic was the actual birth mother and yes. you know, and, and and he's saving her as the last kill and then finally, Madison um, gets into this empty void, uh, this mind space is what Wiki says it is. And she confronts Gabriel and says, hey, it's my body too. And then Gina, Gina slaps her knee, my wife, and goes, if she says my choice, I'm going to be mad, Jordan. <laughs> mm -hmm. I thought it was funny. Because she was like, this is my body. And Gina's like, is it your choice? Um, glad they didn't she, make a statement with yeah, that. Yeah, glad they didn't way. make a statement. And then she just metaphorically puts him in a jail cell, in a way, in this void, and says, hey, I'm in control. It's my body, too. And he's like, I'll escape one day. And she's like, I'll be waiting. And I'm like, no, you won't, because there won't be a sequel, because how can you make a sequel? And, uh, okay, credits. So then this is where I call bullshit before we get into our review, our overall popcorn. I get I'm asking a lot with this statement or question <laughs> i don't know what i'm going to say yet when it comes to that but she says this is my body i'm sorry but how can a normal woman if you will have a, a, have a tumor grow out the back of her head and become superhuman strength like spider-man super strength can get shot and not die to contort and break her bones, and then after she defeats him, breaks her bones back in place. It's just, it's ridiculous at now, this point. Now we're, now so we're there. So the same question was asked as we were talking about this movie after the first watch. The only thing I can think of, uh, at least I would and go with me on this, is the 
M. Night Shyamalan excuse. We made the comparison to Tawan and Shyamalan uh, earlier in the podcast here. When he did uh, Split and James McAvoy um, in in that, they came up with that the human mind is so powerful that it could convince the body to yada, 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 do this. And it gave him super strength in that movie. And it also gave him the ability to climb up some walls because he willed it to happen. And so Gabriel is such a a powerhouse that he willed it to happen and he was able to do all that shit and when madison wakes up she is none the wiser and the body is an amazing miracle and is able to are you buying any of this should i keep on going i mean no i mean it's yeah i'm sure I mean, it is my fault for asking these questions at this point of the movie. I, I should not be asking these questions. Um, so, I mean, it's it's shame on me. But it was just like, okay. And also the thing that really stinks about this, too, is that Gabriel is this it's, – it's a twin. He is a twin that was not developed in the womb. And they call it a tumor and a cancer or whatever. So just because he's a twin doesn't mean he has super freaking strength. But then again, I'm asking way too much. This is when the movie right. starts to piss you off. Well, and you're like, okay, now wait a minute, you know? And Time out, because strength aside is one thing, but, I mean, the stealth is another. This person was able to, to break an entry. They was able to teleport it seamlessly, kind of wherever they needed to. Like, mm -hmm. you know, move very, very quietly. Um, not really make a mess unless they really wanted to. Like, you know, Gabriel is, like, half spiritual, he really, um, for the most part, but this is this this is a James Wan movie, you know. Just don't don't ask the questions. Just get scared. Just have some fun with it. But yeah, I I agree with you. Like those those parts obviously should not happen. But then again, neither should a devil tumor living on some back of somebody's body should either. So now I have to say this part here. I don't, and I, and I said this to my wife. Now you can call me out if you want. I feel for this case in point, a medium bag is a cop out. This is it, it's. Ooh, yeah. I mean, it's tough. I I feel like a medium bag is too safe. That's what I'm saying. Know? It's too safe because my wife was like, "Oh, this is definitely a medium bag," and I was like, "That's a cop out. That's too safe. This has to be either a large or a small because it's either really good for what it is." Or it's like not really good. It's not a good movie. I mean, medium bag is just such a cop out. Yeah, I I, I agree with you hundred percent, Jordan. There's really the, there's no way they went halfway in this movie, and there's no way that we can give it a halfway rating. No, there's no way. So I'll go first and say that I I think with saying that, I feel this is a large bag without giving a medium bag cop out, just because I was entertained. I mean, like there's been some interesting horror movies we reviewed this year. That did not hold my attention. Uh, case in point, things heard and seen. Yes. Remember that one? I mean, it did not hold my attention. There's been a few. Um, this was crazy. This was off the wall. This was ridiculous. This was a typical James Wan Shyamalan movie, if you will. Um, it's ridiculous when you think about it. So the best thing for me to say for you as a horror fan who was listening to the show, just just turn your brain off and just, and just have fun. It's definitely a large bag. But if you sit there and pick it apart like I was starting to do at the end, you start to get upset and frustrated that it becomes a small bag. Yeah. So go with it. I I, I don't think that it's acted great. Um, I think the best things about this movie is the camera movements. I thought the editing was good. The lightning definitely set up a mood. But again, I thought the design of, of Gabriel was very generic. Oh, you know, trench coat and long black hair. Well, I haven't seen that before. You know what I mean? Um Acting wasn't really that well. Uh, a lot of things just happened because they happened. You have a superhero of a sister who's not even blood. They call out in the movie when she's like, you know, I yeah. may not be blood, but we're family. Like, you know, like the Vin Diesel line. But again, if you take all that bull crap aside, and if you want to have a good, fun, scare movie for a Halloween night with your significant other, perfect movie for that. It has the scares. It has... Last thing, too, before I keep on my rant, it doesn't have that loud bang jump scares, which I thoroughly appreciated. I did not – I cannot tell you one time where you had the big loud bang and then the killer jumps out. Oh, no. No, there were uh, there were some jump scares. Don't get us wrong. 
but but not but not like the big no 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 but not like yeah your 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 kind of very cheesy studio uh scare yeah large bag i can't believe i'm giving it a large bag but i really was sitting there last night saying god a medium is just such a cop-out so because this movie is as is asking for more so a large bag for me eric what is your pop ready for malignant i agree with you 100 percent, jordan that uh everything that you just said um you know, I, I really don't even need to repeat, but I give it a large bag just because I, I I enjoyed it much, a lot more than I didn't like it. You know what I mean? Like anything that I would have a problem with this movie is completely overshadowed by the things that I enjoyed about this movie. And yeah, just like you had said, is it, it's good to just see it for what it is right there. Enjoy everything that you liked out of it. Don't pick apart too much of it because then you'll just start having a bad time with it. It's easy to pick apart uh, this type of movie, but because this movie wasn't trying to be anything more serious, it was just being like, yeah, we know that this is really ridiculous and this is really crazy. And this is what it looks like. So, oh, all right, then. Yeah, let's, just, let's keep on. There should have been a moment where we had stopped long ago, but we're going to keep on going and see what happens. Yep, totally agree with you. And I actually find it very funny that a movie that is like this is a large bag and kept my attention more than a big Hollywood produced Jim from the office movie reviewed last week with quiet place Two. You know, what helped in this movie was again, a lot of those fluffer shots of, of Seattle, which seemed to just kind of kind of break tension and was there to reset a bit. The music that he used to break scenes seemed off almost he used i think the same track two or three different times which is like what what the hell like this neo cyberpunk kind of kind of you know uh uh, lo-fi type of thing that he was trying to do maybe lo-fi you know what i mean but like uh, some some sort of like this electro kind of punk music that he was cutting in between it's like that this does not belong here i don't know what you're going with what vibe you're going with this as very confusing but you know what that probably helps he's like this music's very confusing and this story is very confusing and it Mm. all just kind of worked together the lighting like you had said worked really well did you notice all of the red and blues in this movie i noticed a lot of red especially from the poster so that i was looking for that because the poster tells you the theme you know so i think is because the battle within madison is her the good and gabriel the bad the the red and the blue and throughout this entire movie we get a lot of red versus blue uh, a yeah. lot of contrast in the in the scenes, just everywhere, whether it be at the beginning with the police in the front, or whether it be with um, the kill scenes, uh, with her looking at Gabriel. So like the scenes that that she's Madison is like doing something is very blue, and then when it cuts over to Gabriel, it turns red. There's a lot of red and blues in there, and so I think that's that's kind of what it was trying to show. Yeah. Um. And so it, again, just a fun movie. Um, I was, I, I, again, movie that I was watching again, um, it falls under two hours, which I think is great. I think two hours has become kind of like the new mark in it movies. It has been. Yeah, it definitely has been. So if falling under, I think is, is to the benefit. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't know how they could do a sequel to this. So we'll prequel. wait for a, a prequel maybe. So we'll wait for Insidious yeah. 3, um, until then, but. Yeah, that's that's that is what it is. I enjoyed it. All right, cool. Well, everybody, thank you so much for listening to this most recent episode of Movie Guys Podcast. Like always, check us out at Movie Guys Podcast at Podbean dot com or wherever you get your podcast from. Thank you so much, and we'll be back next Thursday for another awesome episode of Movie Guys Podcast. Have a good night.